Just a short disclaimer, but I will be using the Indonesian Wikipedia of Transjakarta as a guide for this video along with my own personal experience. I won't be rating every model individually, more like every type of bus and then I'll comment any particular interesting models within said category. Anyway, in C tier we have the single door Hino buses. They have one BRT door per side, which is a problem if the line starts to get crowded since it means longer boarding times. Weak and leaky AC is a common problem. Buses are also kind of rattly and loud. And the lack of an automatic front door means that two-man operations is basically mandatory for feeder operations. The plus side is that it's quick, 80 km per hour on the highway when traffic is light, and it can fit a lot of people, just that most of them will be standing. I learned that when using the T11. Personally, I think the Hino Laksana Discovery BRT looks the best, followed by the Rahayu Sandosa, Rustu Ibu Pusaka, Trisakti, and New Armada. The last two might be used for night bus operations only, eh? I never saw them. In B tier, we have the older mini trans buses from New Armada and Trisakti. Biggest problem seems to be the vibration. The whole bus dances when idle and some of them have the door chime that won't stop beeping unless the door is closed. A problem you start to notice when you're sitting idle at the start of the line. Also in B tier are the Royal Trans buses. Yeah, the legroom kind of ruined it, or maybe my legs are too long. Unless you get the very front seat, it's tight inside. And the rattling in some of the buses is kind of a problem. The good news is that both Mini Trans and Royal Trans buses provide a nice front view. They also don't have the woman only zone. In A tier, we have all the high floor two door buses. I'm not gonna mention them one by one sim simply because I'll be repeating myself a lot. They're comfy, most seats on the buses face the front which is more comfortable, though standing room is somewhat limited. All of them look good but the one by Nusantara Gamilang looks weird and the somewhat curved body reminds me of the Singapore MRT trains for some reason. Some of them also take forever to open the doors, particularly the shorter variants you see in Corridor 8 that play an entire orchestra before opening the doors. I think the best looking ones has to be the Mercedes-Benz OH1626 by Laksana operated by Mayasari, specifically the one with the extra lights. Next in A tier is all the Metro Trans buses, both diesel and electric. Their usage in a high floor BRT system may be controversial but we're judging the buses, not how they're used. Lots of seating, easy to get on and off. Overall, it provides a smooth ride though I recall the BYD electric buses taking a bit too long to open the doors which is a problem if there stops every 500 meters, like in the D21. Metro trans buses also may or may not have the woman only zone. Transjakarta gives that choice to the drivers or officers on board. Usually regular non-BRT lines don't have it, especially if occupancy is low, and trans Jabodetabek lines usually have them. Starting with the diesel ones, I think the Scania Laksana one looks the best, as for the electric ones, it has to go to the BYD. Also in A tier is the newer Mini Trans buses. Not only do you get a nice front view, there's no vibration problems and annoying door chime like in the older models. Also this is the only bus where you have to use your seat belt when you're sitting in the very front seat. Last in A tier is all the double decker tour buses. I've never used them, but I think Transjakarta should get more of them and run them on long distance routes. Yes, using double deckers for trans Jabodetabek lines like in Toronto. They have two doors only, but in a highway route with limited stops, having few doors isn't such a problem and the many seats will make using such a route more comfortable. I was also going to suggest using it for the 7B because it is a crowded line that happens to go through some narrow streets that would be uncomfortable to run bending buses in. But then I opened Google Maps and I saw all the power lines and overhead wires and I was like, yeah, never mind, Jakarta is not ready for this. There's also the double decker buses that don't have a roof. Those should probably stay as tour buses. In S tier, we have the Bendy buses, both Chongtong and Scania. I think the Scania is better, it looks better, it sounds better. The 
doesn't take forever to close its doors, unlike the Chongtong bus. It has the side facing seats like a metro train for maximum capacity. One thing that bothers me is that Trans Jakarta doesn't run that many bendy buses. Meanwhile, Trans Millennium mostly runs bendy buses. And Bogota is a smaller city than Jakarta. Also, another city that runs lots of bendy buses is Brampton, a car centric suburban city with 650,000 people. Somehow manages to find enough transit demand to run bendy buses all day, every 10 to 15 minutes, in multiple corridors. Every BRT corridor except maybe 6 due to tight turns and 14 due to low demand should be flooded with bendy buses. My only other criticism of the bendy buses is that they don't have enough doors. Might need a second street level door in the back just like the Transmillennial buses. This is so that bendy buses can also be used efficiently in non-BRT lines, like the really crowded 1A. Now to some buses not operated by Transjakarta for better perspective. First, Angkots. They range from F to C tier depending on how much rust there is in the vehicle. I've seen some nasty looking Angkots that have rust everywhere. They pretty much get F tier. I've also seen some Angkots in Bogor in surprisingly good condition. They get D to C tier. Most micro trans minibuses would also get C tier. Biggest problem, no AC. Waiting 10 minutes inside an Angkot with no AC with 9 other people in 35 degree heat is a very efficient way to get people to stop using transit. BSD link buses get D tier. The buses themselves are pretty decent with two automatic doors and dot matrix displays in front. That is unless you go over one of these things and the rattling causes the plastic seats to smash against the body and deafens everyone inside the bus. Agramas's newer fleet in the Porres Plawa Cikarang line gets A tier. It's just comfy, cold AC, lots of legroom, perfect for longer highway routes. This is by far the most comfortable bus in the tier list. All it lacks is some dot matrix displays up front for better wayfinding and a more modern look. Here's a bus from outside Indonesia, the Nova Bus LFS. It's decent, it works, but it looks kind of old and don't be fooled by the cloth seats because those seats somehow feel even harder than the BSD Link's plastic seats. Biggest problem, cleanliness. So this is not exactly the bus's fault. Yeah, let's just say Brampton Transit does not keep its buses anywhere as clean as Transjakarta. And sometimes their buses smell like so it gets seat here.